Hello everybody, it is Corinne Fox, or Foxy, your drama teacher here. Welcome to our fabulous stage. Today I thought what I would do is I would go over some very specific stage terms that all of you in theater arts one or technical theater arts need to know and need to learn for this class. And these are also just some helpful theater terms or stage terms stage vocabulary that will be helpful for you to know if you are interested in learning more about the components and the pieces of a stage. So right now we are in what is called a proscenium theater. And a proscenium theater is essentially where you have the stage where I'm standing right now that is separated from the audience. The audience is out in the seats behind you right now, behind the camera. And right now I am in I am on the stage and it is a proscenium theater. And another thing that makes it a proscenium theater is this thing here called a proscenium arch. And this proscenium arch extends beyond the grand curtain and it acts as kind of a barrier between whatever is happening on stage and the audience. Now, this lovely shade of purple curtain over here is what is called a grand curtain. And this grand curtain you can see has pieces on this side. It extends all the way up above the stage and it goes all the way over there to stage left. And this grand curtain has the ability to close across the entire length of the stage. And what it does is it separates whatever action is happening behind the grand curtain from the audience. So that is one of the terms you need to know, the grand curtain. Sometimes we just call it the grand. This area here in front of the grand that proceeds further, further forward than the rest of the stage is called the apron. And sometimes if there is a really, really big scene change that is going on backstage or behind the grand, we might have a little small scene or, or a, uh, a vignette in front of the grand on what's called the apron because there's, I would say there's maybe six or eight feet of stage that extends out in this apron piece and so you can really do quite a lot of, of, of stage magic here in front of the curtain while the grand curtain is closed. Behind the grand curtain we have another series of additional curtains and what these curtains do is they have several different purposes. One purpose is to hide whatever is happening in the wings and the wings is like the backstage area or sides of the stage area where your actors are waiting to come on stage, where your techies are waiting to, to move set pieces. It's where we store set pieces in between different scenes. And so in the wings, there's a lot going on that has to do with the show, but doesn't have to do with the actual performance of what's going on. And so we want to kind of hide that from the audience. That way they don't break the magic or break that willing suspension of disbelief that is happening when they're on stage. So to do that, we have these types of curtains over here that are called legs. And these legs are stationary curtains. They don't move. In a perfect world, they might rotate <laughs> or slide a little bit, but as opposed to this grand curtain that we can close the entire length of the stage, these legs here are just single pieces of fabric that don't close, they don't move, but they act as a little barrier between the audience and whatever is happening in the wing. This curtain here, I've pulled closed a little bit, is a lot like the grand curtain in that it travels across the entire length of the stage. So right now I'm right about the midpoint on stage, and so this is often called the mid or the mid curtain or the mid traveler. And what it does is it can close and it can cut off whatever is happening behind the traveler and whatever is happening in front of the traveler. So a traveling curtain is any curtain that closes the full length of the stage. So even though this is commonly known as the grand, it is still a traveling curtain. This curtain here is called a mid, but it is a traveling curtain, which means it travels the whole length of the stage, as opposed to one of the legs that is stationary that doesn't actually move. If I'm looking up, there are a series of smaller curtains. These are called teasers, and these are little curtains that just, they kind of decorate the stage, because if you think of, of a theater, and in a very regal sense of the word, you have all of these curtains 
that add, that add ambiance, that add elegance, that add opulence to a theater. And so you have these teasers out there that in theory are supposed to hide the lights, but they don't actually do that here. You'll see in the black box theater in just a minute that we don't have any kind of fancy curtains like that above the stage, but that's what those little curtains are above there. They're called teasers. Now here I am at the far upstage part of the stage, and there are two other types of curtains I want to talk about here. This curtain here is our psyche, and a psyche is a very, very thick piece of muslin fabric that is often white, or in this case it's like a, an off-white cream color, that is used to project colored light onto. So our psych we can use with a short throw projector. We can project images onto this fabric here to create a background or to create ambiance for our theater. We can just have specialty lights where we project colors onto this. We can project oranges and reds and have a pretty sunset image on here. We could project shapes and figures that move. And so that's the purpose of this psych or cyclorama is the full term being light in color so that we can use it to project images and colors onto. This curtain over here is a far upstage traveler. Again, it also closes the full length of the stage and it both protects the psych, but also has its own purpose itself. If you want to create an atmosphere or if you want to not have the psych be the background of a particular scene, you can close this rear traveler or upstage traveler, and then you will have the psych hidden. Now, upstage, what is upstage? There are four stage directions I wanna go over with you real quick. And where I'm standing right now is the far upstage right side of the stage. And stage directions are all from the actor's perspective. The audience, they are sitting, they are not moving, they don't need to know if they're going left or right. So whenever you refer to stage left or stage right, it is always from the actor's perspective. So right now, I am standing stage right, and if I would go over here, now I'm going toward the stage left area. So it's very important for you to understand that left and right on stage is from the actor. Now upstage and downstage is a little bit counterintuitive and let me explain why that is. Back during the olden times, back, back in the olden days, stages used to be built on an incline and I know I've talked to you guys about this in class before so if you're hearing this repeatedly I apologize. But Stages were built on an incline, and so an actor, my, here, this is my little actor here, actors would have to physically walk down in order to get closer to the audience, and then in order to get away from the audience, they would have to walk up the stage. And so we've adopted those terms, or those terms just kind of stuck, and they still are in, in use now, even though our stages are flat. So now, when you move down stage, you are physically moving closer to the audience, as opposed to moving up the stage, you're moving away from the audience. And so whenever we're on stage and we're rehearsing together and I say, come on down, come on down, come, come further down stage, further down stage, I mean, come closer to me, come closer to the audience. Or if I'm talking about upstage, go, go away, go upstage, you're, you're, too, you're too close, you're too close, go up. And it, it, you, have to, you have to think about it in terms of, of imagining you're walking up a hill or away from the audience, and that will help you remember that upstage is away from the audience and downstage is toward the audience. There are two more terms I wanna to talk to you about while we're up here by the psych, and unfortunately I can't show you examples of that because I just don't have them here available to show you. But the psych, this piece of fabric here, oh dear, that's got a little teeny tiny hole in it, is used to project color, it's used to project images, and like I said before, the beauty of it being a single piece of light colored fabric is that you can change out your images throughout a production if you are so advanced in your technology that you have the ability to do that with a projector. Other times, you will have what's called a backdrop. And a backdrop is kind of what they used before a lot of modern technology, a lot of, a lot of modern stage technology, where they would have a piece of fabric that would have a painted scene on it. So if we took this psych and we painted the inside of a castle or we painted the 
outside of a town or we painted a forest or we painted some sort of image or scene on this fabric, it would become a backdrop. And what's great about backdrops is they, when the, when the curtain opens and you see the backdrop, the audience knows immediately, wow, they're in a castle or oh, they're outside in a forest or oh, I get it, they're on the moon. And the audience will know right away where the scene is taking place. The negative or the drawback to a backdrop is that it's stationary and that in order to change out a backdrop in between scenes in a show, you either need to have a fly system, which unfortunately in a high school we don't have, where they can raise and lower different backdrops to change scenes out throughout the course of a production, or you can have a backdrop here and then you can close that mid curtain that I pointed out to you before and then you can have another scene take place in front of that. But if you don't have access to a fly system or the ability to change a backdrop in and out, you're limited to having just that one scene be seen by the audience throughout an entire show. So using psychs and using projections is really the, the wave of the future, but backdrops is something that is still used and it's still very common to see in theater today. The last piece of technology or the last uh, piece of curtain wear that I want to talk to you guys about today is called a scrim. And a scrim, you will most likely see in the front of the theater or in the, at the midsection of a theater. And the scrim is often black. It doesn't have to be. Sometimes it can be a light color. But what's great about a scrim is that a scrim is often see-through. And so with the light, with the right lighting techniques, you can have images portrayed behind a scrim and that the audience can see through the scrim or you can actually have special effects that take place using a scrim or using smoke effects. The example that I gave in my Theater Arts 1 class that I'll give you guys now is Beauty and the Beast. And there was a production of Beauty and the Beast that occurred right here in this theater a number of years ago. And they used a scrim right in the front. And what they did was in the very, very beginning of Beauty and the Beast, where the old uh, woman comes to see the prince and then she turns into a beautiful enchantress and she casts a spell on the prince and turns the prince into a beast. That's how the whole Beauty and the Beast begins. It is, It would take a lot of Disney magic to make that transformation happen very seamlessly in front of an audience. And so what you can do with a scrim is add some smoke effects, add some lighting effects, and you can create the effect of this old, haggard old woman turning into or transforming into a beautiful enchantress in tandem with a prince then turning into this hideous beast. And using a piece of fabric that's slightly see-through will enable that magic to be a little bit more replicable, replicatable? That's a word I don't know how to, to use in this context. You can replicate that effect on stage without having other technology or other resources available to you. So a scrim, we use them often. I am behind the camera for these next two vocabulary words. So if you look out, I'm standing on the stage and you can see the audience. You can see where the audience sits. And this is called the house. Essentially the house is a location where the audience is located. It is also often where the box office is located. It's any area outside of the theater where it is not the stage. So the house, you can see the double doors there on the right side, my right, and that is the entrance to our theater. But outside of those doors is where we would have our box office, it's where we would sell concessions, and all of those things are considered part of the house. Now look directly above the audience and you can see uh, several bright lights that are shining onto me right now. They're actually quite warm because there's no AC in the theater right now. It's, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's kind of sweaty. But that is our catwalk. And if you guys have seen the Potomac Falls Theater tour, I actually go up onto the catwalk, which I'm not gonna do in this video, but you, you're welcome to watch that video and see what the catwalk looks like. I'll link it up above and down below for you. The catwalk is the area above the stage where our spotlights or our ellipsoidal or source four lights are kept. And you can see there's an abundance of them on stage left, and there are not so many of them on stage right. There are fixtures up there, the bulbs have all just burned out, which is so sad. 
So that is the catwalk. It is an area above the theater where you focus and have your spotlights located. The next term we're gonna talk about today is called a batten. And I was trying so hard to get this camera in the right angle to be able to see your pretty faces and also to be able to talk about a batten, but my tripod is just not that fancy. So a batten, as you can see, is where we hang our lights. So up above our stage, we have several different electrical bars that have outlets in them that are specifically designed for stage lights. And so we use a series of equipment and clamps to attach our lights to these battens and then we plug them in and then the electricity runs all the way down to the ground where we're able to control and operate the lights. So this is called a batten where lights are hung above the stage. But how, you may ask, do we change out light bulbs? And how do we change out a fixture when they're broken? Well, there are a couple different ways. One thing we can do is we have this, we call it a cherry picker, but it's one of those genies that goes nee, 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 and it, it raises whoever's on it all the way up to the batten level to reach the lights when they're above you. And we will use that right before a show when we're trying to focus our lights because that's at the point where we don't want the lights to move and we don't want them and we want to make sure that we have ones that the spots and the floods are very very specifically targeted to where action is happening on stage but if we are swapping a bunch of fixtures out or if we're doing a repair to a bunch of fixtures we're not going to take the cherry picker all the way up we're not going to take a bunch of fixtures all the way up for one thing they're actually very heavy and it's because you're 15 feet up in the air it's actually quite dangerous to have several people up there on a cherry picker trying to do this and so what we'll do is we can actually take those battens and lower them to do maintenance work on them and to do that we use these winch or batten winches oh i just touched them and i got my hands all full of grease oh yuck 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 oh ew 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 okay i don't know if you can see it in the camera because i'm in the dark and i'm using my camera flashlight oh gross ew okay we use these batten winches and what these i oh, sorry sorry i'm still so grossed out by that and what these do is these have a hand crank and then we can raise and lower the battens using these cranks we have three of them one for each of the electrical bars on our stage this one over here does our psych lights this one here does the lights that are far downstage and then this one here does the electric that is right in the middle in a perfect world, in a modern, technologically advanced theater, these are automated or they are electric and you can just push a button and then the battens themselves slowly lower. We get an arm workout. I think I'm still touching the grease. Why do I keep doing that? Ew. Anyway, we get a good arm workout. So when it's time to raise and lower the battens, we usually have about three people back here taking turns to make sure that no one gets too tired. And then we also have a chain of command, someone at the midpoint and then someone on stage, making sure that no one is under the battens as we are lowering them for safety purposes. I'm gonna go wash my hands now, okay? I'll be, I'll be right back. <laughs> The last word we have on our vocabulary list for stage terms or basic stage terms is a black box. And a black box theater, in contrast to a proscenium theater, where a proscenium theater, they have the audience and the stage separated from each other. In a black box theater, you have all one level and one room where the actors and the audience share a common space. And so this is our black box here, and you can see that it is all just one big space. And so we have the option, if we want, to put whatever is happening in the front there. And we have, it's not a traditional site, we have a white curtain that we can pull across the mirror. And we have this black curtain here that can act as a little grand or as a traveler, because it travels across the whole stage. And we can create a little perf performance space here to separate the actors from the audience. We can have rows of chairs here and have a traditional show like you would in a proscenium theater. But also in a black box, you have the ability to do things like theater in the round, where you have the actors in the middle and you have the audience on all sides of the actors. Or you could have the audience on three sides of the actors or two sides of the actors. You have a lot more flexibility to create a more creative stage and a more creative performance environment. So that is 
what happens in a black box theater. If you look directly above the black box, you will see, again, some battens like we have on our stage. These here are kind of old-fashioned battens because they are they have twist lock electrical bars as opposed to the three stage pin that we have on our stage. So this is definitely a trend that is on its way out, but we do have a couple of stage lights that we can use in our black box. And I'm hoping to upgrade the electrical in this black box here in the next year or two. That way we have the ability to outfit our battens with a lot more stage lights, which will give us a lot more performance options when in our theater. So there you have it guys, those are all of your basic stage terms and your stage vocabulary for what you see on a regular stage, all the curtains and the electrics and the types of stages that we have. So if you have any questions, you can feel free to leave me a comment down below, but make sure you study those stage terms because things like stage left and stage right and the T's and, and travelers and grands we use in common stage vernacular all the time. So they're great terms for you all to learn. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you next time.